The U.S. has been shooting down objects out of the sky for the past few days, leaving many of us to wonder if we are now at war with sophisticated, unidentified aerial phenomenon. On Friday and Saturday, two objects were shot down over Alaska and Canada, with an additional object shot down over Lake Huron in Michigan. And everyone is wondering what the hell is going on. The Pentagon is being vague, but telling us the objects are not balloons, even though they released this statement, quote, in light of the People's Republic of China balloon that we took down last Saturday, we have been more closely scrutinizing our airspace at these altitudes, including enhancing our radar, which may at least partly explain the increase in objects that we've detected over the past week. Oh, okay. So before they couldn't see all of these objects, but now they can. And apparently we've been under surveillance this whole time and our super sophisticated multi-trillion dollar national defense had no idea. Some of the pilots claimed the objects interfered with their radars and had no obvious signs of propulsion. So these objects are mysterious, advanced, and we've never seen them before, allegedly. Okay, so what are these objects? Well, one of the ideas is that these are some sort of spy craft from China. That's the obvious low-hanging fruit narrative that allows the Pentagon to advocate for billions of more dollars. <coughs> Many of the politicians skeptical of endless spending for Ukraine are, interestingly, very hawkish on China. You can get defense money from them. You just need to push the right buttons. This, however, poses a slight narrative challenge. We've been told for a long time that China has crappy versions of stolen tech and wouldn't be able to hold up at all against the U.S. in a hot war. And if they now have some sort of mysterious tech we've never seen, what does that mean? Another idea is that these objects are just some of the hundreds of weather balloons that are released each and every day and are no threat at all. That the administration is just using these harmless balloons as a distraction away from the reporting that the U.S. attacked Russia and Germany by blowing up their infrastructure. That they are using these balloons as a means towards increased surveillance, increased militarism, and increased warmongering. The idea that they are rogue balloons actually makes a lot of sense because if you look at the path of the polar jet stream, you'll find it's exactly where these unidentified flying objects have been spotted and shot down. The stream goes down through Alaska, over Canada, into Montana, and down through South Carolina. Plus, even Beijing claimed to have one of these objects flying over them this past weekend. And if you look at how the polar jet stream affects them, they're right under it as well. So are we actually at war with weather balloons? Or maybe they're aliens. What's the possibility of this? Well, there's no better person to ask this question to than Dr. Stephen Greer. Dr. Greer is a renowned figure in the UFO and extraterrestrial research community and is the father of the disclosure movement, bringing to light the vast testimony regarding the existence of extraterrestrial life forms visiting the planet. He's an emergency physician. Dr. Greer, thank you so much for joining the show today. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right. So are these UFOs? I mean, you are the best person to be asking this question to. Are these extraterrestrial UFOs, I should ask? Uh, no, they're not. And, you know, one of the things that I think people have to understand is context here. Um, in the last year, uh, we have been providing definitive information to the key researchers in uh, Washington, who by law now have to provide a report um, on UAPs or UFOs. And uh, what they have done is to get very much onto the inside of clandestine operations that have man-made objects uh, that are deployed globally, that are not from extraterrestrial origin, but that are extremely advanced um, uh, type of propulsion and energy systems. Now, this is, this is never broken into the, the media because it gets taken out of the narrative or it gets, uh, you know, shadow banned. Uh, the truth is we have definitive proof testimony, people who've worked on these technologies, some of which are reverse engineered from uh, decades, 70 some years of uh, reverse engineering actual extraterrestrial vehicles. But these objects, remember, uh, they're going along at, at, at speed. Uh, and even the ones that have been in the media over the last few years, the so-called Tic Tac and others that have been on CNN and everywhere else, those were from the Lockheed Skunk Works. Now, an actual extraterrestrial vehicle, uh, you're not going to shoot that down with a, a kinetic weapon, and you're not going to shoot that down with a laser. It's going to take a very sophisticated uh, directional energy weapon to do that, which they have. But this, I believe, is part of a 
a diversion. Well, some people would call it a false flag to sort of uh, put this on the radar at a time where they want to divert people's attention from other issues and, most importantly, the lawmakers away from the information that they were beginning to drill down on in the last year about the actual origin of UFOs and UAPs, a, a percentage of which are, in fact, of extraterrestrial origin. The majority that of ones people see are clandestine and illegally funded aerospace platforms of, of various types. Now, are many of these potentially from China? Yes, perhaps. But the point I'm, I make to people is that the organization that deals with this issue isn't U.S. It only. It's global. So if they wanted to deploy uh, assets that would trigger a news frenzy to sort of posit that there's some threat um, coming, then it would be very easy to gaslight the public and, more importantly, the lawmakers in the White House on this, because that is the that is how this whole system is uh, set up. Uh, remember, if you those of you old enough to remember the Vietnam War, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, where we basically stage an attack on our own ships uh, to expand the Vietnam War because uh, there was a need to get the funding for it and to create a, a, a hysteria with the public, and it worked. The same thing was done after 9-11, where we went into uh, uh, Saddam Hussein's country, Iraq, where there was no evidence that he was involved whatsoever in the 9-11 attacks. But it justified a one or two trillion dollar war that, of course, greatly uh, enriched the war mongers, and notwithstanding the fact that you know, hundreds of thousands of innocent lives, American and otherwise, were lost. And so there, there's this long uh, trajectory of uh, what's called in the counterintelligence community stagecraft, where they can set up operations that change the narrative and pull people in a direction that's a uh, misdirect, quite frankly. And that, I believe, the, the worrisome thing about this, if you look at a documentary we created uh, about a year and a half ago, it's up on my YouTube channel, and you can provide a link, called The Cosmic Hoax. We go through all of this. We, we go through the proof that this is the case, and no less a figure than the modern, uh, the father of, of modern rocketry, Werner von Braun, uh, Adolf Hitler's guy who built the V2 rocket. He stated on his deathbed uh, to a member of my team, Carol Rosen, that we would try to hoax, quote, an alien threat, unquote. That doesn't exist because that is the ultimate card to play to create a sort of global hegemony of militarist and military industrial, uh, frankly, fascist. Uh, control over the people through fear, because fear really works. I and mean, look what they did with COVID. Look what they did with the 9-11 event. So there, there is an orchestrated effort by a clandestine organization, which I can assure you, when I have briefed the sitting director of the CIA from past administrations, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the top military intelligence person in the world, ministers of defense of all the Five Eyes countries except New Zealand, meaning Canada, United Kingdom, U.S., and Australia, none of them have been briefed or read in on these projects, and they have been deliberately deceived when they've made inquiries, if not threatened. Now, you keep in mind that, I mean, this has come out publicly recently. Uh, when I briefed 25 years ago, or almost 26 years ago, the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Tom Wilson, he received from me a document that listed the project code names and numbers. And he made inquiries. And when he did, he was threatened with not only demotion, but more. And he was denied access to his projects. Now, when he, one person that he spoke to said, uh, you don't have a need to know. He said, well, how can I not have the need to, go, to know? I'm the head of intelligence, J2, for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That, narr that story that I'm telling you right now, extrapolate that over 33 years I've been doing this. And then I, and in meeting after meeting, I've warned of the ability of this clandestine and illegally run operation to gaslight the government and the American people and the global public uh, on a threat from out there that doesn't exist. Now, the question is, are they pivoting to do this and say it's all Chinese? For example, there have been professional disinformation agents like Lou Elizondo and Chris Mell and others that have been going up and telling members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, oh, these were from China. 
when they were talking about the things that were ours, literally made by my uncle's company, Northrop Grumman, uh, he, he's deceased now, or Lockheed Skunk Works. Now, I, we can prove this through testimony, through documents, what have you, but you'll never see this in the New York Times. And I think the problem is, is that the, the stranglehold that uh, these interests have on large mainstream media and tech companies prevents the truth from penetrating enough people to avert what I've worried about for many years. And that is, I, you know, what's happened in the last two weeks or 10 days where the public and our government can be worked into a frenzy by pulling a few triggers that control the media and the narrative that there's this threat that we all have to be worried about. I honestly think that, you know, when they said that, well, they're now training their sensors uh, to detect these objects, I know for a fact the, the National Reconnaissance Office, the super secret spy satellite operation, they have had uh, sensors that could pick up these objects in space and over the earth for many decades with absolute granular resolution. The question is, why are they suddenly announcing their existence? What kind of uh, event uh, are they trying to set up here? So I'm very suspicious of it. I can't say definitively whether they're trying to posit a, uh, a threat from outer space that's quote unquote alien, which is ludicrous, frankly, uh, or that it, you know it's, it's, it's something from China so we can get ourselves into another world war or some huge conflict that benefits the usual suspects in the military industrial community. Yeah, and that's what I'm I'm leaning towards as I'm just thinking that this is just a ploy in order to drag China into the conflict to get those who are not on board with really funding endlessly to Ukraine. They're instead, you know, very hawkish towards China. And so if they're told, hey, China's now spying on us, then these people say, oh, my gosh, well, we've got to do something to stop them. Um, one, one, well, for, yeah, wait, wait, wait first of all, I want to make comment on that. Yeah. All countries spy on each other. All countries right. have assets in the countries over the countries, in space, et cetera. We do, the Chinese do, the Russians do, the Israelis do, et cetera. Right. Anyone who thinks otherwise is also being deceived. The question is how and why, just as we are hitting our stride. Now, let me mention one other key thing. Two days before Christmas, the president signed a bill that the Congress passed opening a pathway for whistleblowers on the UFO issue to come forward. I have begun the process of bringing those guys forward and to the right people in DC. Now, is it a coincidence that all this happens within 30 days, less than 30 days, two weeks of this, my first ultra top secret guy being brought in? I, the, 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 it's a little bit worrisome because I know what I'm doing and I know who I'm doing it with. And I know that those guys frankly, some of whom manage the black budget of the United States at that level, who have been denied access to these projects. In the last year, we gave them information where they got access and know what's going on. Suddenly, they pull the trigger on this, uh, some type of counterintelligence operation. Uh, so I think that, you know, uh, you know, frankly, some of these, in fact, are and could very likely are from China. How many of those have been uh, over us before that they've never disclosed? Who knows? Um, on the other hand, we have our own assets that uh, could be deployed uh, from other parts of the world, I might point out, because the so-called electrogravitic anti-gravity systems or electromagnetic field propulsion, those were developed in the 50s and 60s. Now, we have a new film coming out called The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It. The lost century is about 100 years of these sort of energy and propulsion technologies uh, that have been developed and have been extant, but that have never been allowed to be used for peaceful purposes, which is why we have all the global warming and climate change and poverty and pollution we see. Because if you look at how, let's go back a couple years ago, that so-called Tic Tac, that UAP off the coast of San Diego that our F-18 Hornets were chasing, that thing had no means of propulsion. It was solid. It was not a balloon. It was moving against a hundred and some mile per hour headwind uh, at altitude, going straight up and down. And uh, everyone said, oh my God. And at that time they were saying, this is from China. Well, that was not from China. Uh, 
or it's, it's alien. No, it's not alien or extraterrestrial. It's, it came out of the Lockheed Skunk Works out in the Mojave Desert. And I have a picture of the underground place where those things come in and out. I actually have that photo wow. from, from, a Lockheed, from a Lockheed guy who was up in the air and took it. So th- th- this is not speculation on my part. The problem is, you know, getting enough of this information to the decision makers in Washington and to the public so that we can avert uh, a, a massive deception. A sort of cosmic level deception, which is why I appreciate you know you doing your show on the issue. Yeah, it's it's very fascinating. I mean, and uh, and I actually went to your presentation where you talked about the lost century and and um, well the the lost energy you know, and all of the everything that's happened. All these people that have tried to come out and have new forms of energy that would be absolutely beneficial to the planet. Um, which is extremely fascinating. It's a very, and I actually do want to sit down with you in a much longer form and potentially go over a lot of that stuff because that is just very fascinating. People should really know about that. But there is a lot of technology that our government knows about, that they're developing, yes. that they're not telling us about. And so it is questioning, it is questionable on what is going on right now. You know, who is behind it? Are they, and why? And, I, and are they pivoting it towards, well, now we could just warmonger over China. Uh, which seems like it's the likely thing. It seems, but it seems like such a waste to go and blow up some technology, you know, out of the sky, shoot it down out of the sky, unless this is like the cheap version that they don't care about, uh, you know, all just to warmonger China. Well, they have, I mean, look, a, a limitless resources. And, and one thing to remember when people say the government, there are really two governments. There's the government of we the people, the elected and appointed representatives, Frankly, most of them couldn't find their ass in a well-lighted room on this issue uh, because I've met with them and briefed them, to be blunt. But but there is, as Senator Inouye of Hawaii said decades ago in the 80s, he said there's a shadow secret government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, its own funding mechanism that's above the law and free from the law itself. I'm almost quoting. I don't have it right in front of me, but it's in our documentary, Unacknowledged. Now – you have to ask the question, if there were members of the, of the mainstream government, let's call it, who, was, who were saying that 40 years ago during Iran-Contra, what you know, else is going on that have, has evolved in the, in the uh, ensuing 40 years? And I think that this is where you get into some very big constitutional and public interest crises that are not being discussed, that you have operations that have gone rogue that neither the White House nor many of the leaders in the Pentagon, nor the CIA director that I briefed, nor the key members of Congress know anything about. And so this is actually an existential threat to the national security of the United States and, I might add, to the world. And and one last thing, you know, we've published this document The very first director of the CIA, Admiral Roscoe Hillenkeeter, wrote to the New York Times in 1961 and said that the UFO issue is very serious, but, and I'm I'm quoting here, he says, the secrecy surrounding UFOs is a threat to the national security. He did not say the UFOs were a threat to the national security. It's the secret organization that is. And that's what Eisenhower warned about when he left office and he said, beware the military industrial complex. And by the way, military industrial is just a polite way of saying fascism because the roots of fascism are the uh, collusion between major industrial and financial interests hijacking the interests of the the government and the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Stephen Greer, thank you so much for joining us and enlightening us on this and giving us your perspective. Um, you know, thank everybody's, you. everybody's wondering, are, you know, are these aliens? Are they aliens? And, <laughs> and uh, no, maybe it's it, it's probably worse. I mean, it'd probably be better if they were the aliens coming down to finally <laughs> save us from ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, they're, uh, they're certainly watching all this. But I mean, remember, uh, you know, when you have technologies that are, are so classified uh, that you know, key people in the government don't know about them or how they work, never mind the public or the media, it's very easy to trick people. Yeah. So I just tell people, stay calm, don't be deceived, uh, and we need to not make wrong decisions based on fear and hysteria. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Dr. Stephen Greer, go to his website, SeriousDisclosure.com. Uh, lots of information. I mean, really, he's the foremost expert on this topic. So really uh, thrilled to have you on to talk about this with us and really excited about your new film that's going to be coming out, The Lost uh, the Lost Century. Extremely important. That one to me is very, very important. So people should go and check that out. I know it's crowdfunded, so you can donate to that film. You can go to TheLostCenturyFilm.com. Dr. Street, Stephen Greer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a good evening. Well, as the U.S. surpasses a $31.4 trillion debt limit in January, the White House administration continues to disregard the need for spending reduction. Despite the lack of fiscal responsibility from our national leaders, it's time for you to take charge of your financial future. Investing in gold through Birch Gold can provide stability in these uncertain times. And the process of converting a traditional IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA has been made simple by Birch Gold. To get started, simply visit birchgold.com Kim and request a free info kit on gold, followed by a consultation with a precious metals specialist. So, you know, in order to pay off our national debt, every taxpayer in the U.S. would have to contribute $247,000. I don't have that kind of extra money to you. <laughs> so, you know, the debt issue is only expected to get worse, making it imperative to secure your finances. And Birch Gold has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, positive feedback from thousands of satisfied customers, and they can be trusted to safeguard your future. I'm a huge fan of investing in gold. I think it's really the wise thing to do. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. You can visit birchgold.com Kim to take that first step in protecting your assets with gold.